my contributions to our beautiful pastime pale in comparison to the joy that has brought to my life. From the heart of a little boy and the soul of an old man. Commissioner Manford, Hall of Famers, family, friends, and fans, I would like to thank Jane Forbes Clark, Josh, John, and Whitney for a most memorable weekend. A heartfelt thanks to the Contemporary Committee for voting me this most prestigious honor. Congrats to Adrian, Todd, and Joe on your election, and certainly most honored to be going in with you. I'd like to thank every player that ever played for me, minors and the majors, because I'm here today because of you and the four organizations that gave me the opportunity to manage their major league team. I would like you to meet my wife, Katie, my son, Patrick, and my lovely daughter, Kelly, right here in the front row. And I want to thank them for the love for a husband and a father and the support for a baseball lifer. Katie, this just doesn't happen without you. I was having coffee with Katie a couple of weeks after I was elected to the Hall of Fame. And I casually said, Katie, can you believe in your wildest dreams that I've been elected to the Hall of Fame? And Katie replied, Jim, you're not in my wildest dreams. <laughs> From the sandlots of Perrysburg, a jewel of a town in Northwest Ohio to grow up in, to a Hall of Fame stage in Cooperstown is a long journey. Shortly after high school, I signed a pro contract with the Detroit Tigers. The scout to sign me was named Herman Kander, and I think he was fired 24 hours after that transaction was announced. I bounced around the minor leagues for seven years as a player and a player coach, but I want to sum up my playing career real quick with this quick little story. Eddie Brinkman played shortstop 15 years in the big leagues. We both managed in the Tiger organization and were on the White Sox coaching staff at the same time. One day I said to Brink, I looked up your career batting average and it was 224. He said, that's right. I said, heck, Brink, mine was 222. And Brink said, he said, yeah, but mine was in Washington, Detroit, St. Louis, and New York, and yours was in Lakeland, Jamestown, and Rocky Mount. That's a big difference. In 1971, Hoot Evers of the Detroit Tigers hired me to manage the Rookie League in Bristol, Virginia. And that was the beginning of an 11-year managerial run in the minors, including Bristol, Clinton, Iowa, Lakeland, Florida, Montgomery, Alabama, and Evansville, Indiana. I learned so much in those 11 years how to handle players, experiment with strategy, and believe it or not, I read and learned the baseball rule book. It was so valuable because I saw situations later come up in the big leagues that somewhere in one of those minor league games I had seen before, and it certainly helped me be prepared to better handle it. Managing in the minors can be tough because you have to release players and shatter their dreams of ever becoming a big leaguer and I knew that because I was one of them. On the other side of that spectrum, it is so rewarding because you get the chance to tell a player he's going to the big leagues. Such was the case with Jack Morris when I got to deliver the great news. He went on to become one of baseball's best big game pitchers and is seated behind me today here in the Hall of Fame. In 1982, I was hired by Jerry Reinsdorf, Roland Heeman, and a Hall of Fame manager, Tony La Russa, to coach third base for the White Sox. And while my minor league managing was a stepping stone to where I was trying to get, the Chicago White Sox job was my springboard to my major league managing career. Why? Because I felt like it was the final test that I had to take to see if I was ready. And Tony was so influential on showing me what it took to run a big league club. And I've often said Tony La Russa did not make me a manager, but he made me a major league manager. I later scouted, thank you, I later scouted for Tony and general manager Walt Jockety with the St. Louis Cardinals. In 1985, I got my chance when Sid Thrift of the Pittsburgh Pirates 
hired me to manage the Buckos. Thank you, Sid. What a job he did, and who could ever forget the killer bees? It was my first of four teams that I had the honor to manage, the Pirates, the Marlins, the Rockies, and the Tigers. And there was something special about all of them. The Pirates, because they gave me my first chance, and I'll never forget that. And there are some Pirate players here today. Bob Walk, John Wayner, Andy Van Slyke, and I certainly have to mention Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonilla, Jay Bell, Doug Drabeck. I'd love to mention everybody, but I just can't. I never felt like manager and, and fans in Pittsburgh. It felt more like manager and friends. I know we made you happy, and I know we broke your heart, but I always felt that we were in it together. I'd also like to thank Larry Doty, Ted Simmons, and Cam Bonifay, who I worked with in Pittsburgh, and also, at the time, the 13 corporations that probably saved the Pirates. The Marlins, obvious, we won the World Series. Special, because we beat the Cleveland Indians, who I thought had the best offensive lineup that I ever managed against. Also special, because we finally got by the Atlanta Braves, who had five Hall of Fame players, one of my good friends and Hall of Fame manager, Bobby Cox. That's not easy to do. There are some Marlin players here today that I'd also like to thank. Jeff Conine, Gary Sheffield, Charles Johnson, and I can't forget Edgar Renneria, LeVon Hernandez, and Moises Alou. A special thanks to Wayne Heisinga, Don Smiley, General Manager Dave Dombrowski, Al Avila, and David Chad the Rockies. In spite of my subpar managing job, I still had the chance to manage two Hall of Fame players. Larry Walker, a five-tool player with unbelievable instincts. And at that time, an up-and-coming first baseman named Todd Helton, who was just introduced as the second Rocky player to join the Hall of Fame. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Vinnie Castillo, Dante Bichette, the late Daryl Kyle, the late Daryl Hamilton, and there were plenty more. A special thanks to the late Jerry McMorris, Dick and Charlie Monfort, and of course my general manager, Bob Gebhardt, a baseball lifer like me. Detroit Tigers, pretty simple. Signing some 40 years before with the Tigers, I finally got to Detroit in 2006. It took a long time. When I got there, I had a reunion with Dave Dombrowski, one of baseball's great GMs in any era, Al Avila and David Chad, and it was a great reunion. Owner Mike Illich was the most passionate owner that I've ever been around. The entire Illich family went above and beyond to make my time in Detroit so special and Chris Illich and President Scott Harris are still doing that today. Two American League pennants, two World Series appearances, three straight division championships, and some of the most knowledgeable fans came out to the tune of three million people several times. How'd that happen? Because players like the unforgettable Magli Ordonez, Hall of Famer Pudge Rodriguez, and of course the great Miguel Cabrera. And I'd like to mention a few more. Placido Polanco, Curtis Granderson, Todd Jones, Fernando Rodney, Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, Alex Avila, who's here today, and I appreciate Alex, and the old-timer Kenny Rogers. I'm asked a lot, what were your keys or priorities to managing? Some of mine were as follows. Try to get the front office, the major leagues, and the minor leagues all on the same page. Try to make the clubhouse a fun place to come and a great place to work and get that temperature just right. As manager and coaches, we always wanted to get the best version of the player, the respect of the competition, and the people that watched us play. In 2017, I got a call from Commissioner Manford and Joe Torrey asking if I would like to manage the 2017 United States team in the World Baseball Classic. Joe put together a tremendous group of players 
And I added a special guy in Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer from the Tigers, to be my bench coach. And I never saw a group of guys get so close in such a short period of time. And we went on to win that World Baseball Classic for the United States. For the first and only time. One of my greatest memories. All organizations have people that work so hard that never get recognized enough, and I would like to mention some of them, and I hope you don't mind if I read this off. Front office trainers, team doctors, strength coaches, traveling secretaries, clubhouse managers, PR directors, and scouts. And in every place I was, I felt I had the best. Also, thanks to the, ump uh, to the broadcasters, to the media, and the men in blue, the umpires. And of course, the coaches. One of the most important elements of any organization, the coaches. And I'm proud to say that nine coaches over the years that were on our staff either managed in the big leagues prior to or after being on our staff. And I think that's quality. I wish I could mention all of the coaches today, but I can't. So I'm only going to mention the first two I ever hired. Gene Lamont and Rich Donnelly. Rich organized our spring training camp. Thank you. Rich organized our spring training camp every year, and it was absolutely flawless. Gene was listed as a coach, but was really another manager in the dugout. Gene and I were roommates in 1966. He was a longtime minor league manager, and he managed two major league teams, the Chicago White Sox and the Pittsburgh Pirates. It was unbelievable to have your closest friend standing next to you in the dugout through the good times and the tough times. Gene is here. Gene, you're a big part of this. Please stand up. And in closing, I would like to say this to the fans. No matter which Hall of Famer you're here to support today, or which team you cheer for, your presence is always felt. On your feet in the ninth, with the home team clinging to a one-run lead, turning on your television for the first game of the World Series, and seeing 50,000 fans waving towels, hoping and praying that this may be their year. Or a little boy or girl getting their first autograph and scurrying back to the stands to show mom and dad their latest treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, that's you. That's baseball. And this is the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much.